Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to make a gluten-free Chelsea bun. It's a yeasted bread product, and so you need to allow about an hour for the um, dough to prove. But apart from that, there's very, very little that's involved. It's very much mixing it, allowing it to rest, and then we'll roll it later. So the first thing I've got here is our gluten-free bread flour. It does need to be bread flour, and that's 500 grams. And this can all be done in a bowl. You don't need to have a food processor or bread maker at all. Um, so put that in a nice clean bowl. To that, we're then going to add about a teaspoon of xanthan gum. That will just mean that we'll be able to roll it easily without it breaking apart. You could use psyllium husks as well if you didn't want to use xanthan gum. Then we're going to add our um, yeast. That's two sachets of the fast acting yeast and then just a little bit, about a tablespoon of ordinary caster sugar and that will obviously help us um, with it rising. Now we've got our wet ingredients. So it's a rich dough this. So what we're going to do first is add one egg. So just make a small dent in the middle of your flour mix, pour in your egg and then we're going to add the rest of the wet ingredients. So I'm just going to give that a quick stir. Now, to make it lovely and rich, I've got here just a little bit of melted cooled butter. It needs to be cooled, don't let it be hot. So around about 30 grams. Now, if you're dairy free, you could use um, just a dairy free spread or even coconut oil. Then we're going to add our either milk or dairy-free milk. And I would start off first by adding about 200 milliliters. And then if you need a little bit more, then absolutely add a little bit more, but don't add it all at the same time. Um, Gluten-free bread flour um, vary and some of their absorbencies will vary. So depending on which brand you are using, you might need a little bit more or a little bit less. And just gradually, step by step, add, and this should be warm, um, but not boiling hot, so just tepid temperature. As it starts to come together, then you're going to use your hands to bring it together to form a dough. You don't want this um, to be too wet, we are going to be rolling it a little bit later when it proves. Now, the nice thing about gluten-free breads is that you don't really have to do any kneading. We've got no gluten in here, uh, and that's normally one of the main reasons why you would start to knead. But you do need to use some clean hands and just press the dough to the sides of the bowl. Now, initially, you might feel that it needs lots more liquid. Don't be tempted to pour a load more in, just give yourself some time pressing backwards and forwards along the sides of the bowl and it should start to come together. We do this same technique when we're doing our scones, which you can find um, on the YouTube channel as well. So don't over wet uh, the dough. So once it's come together, it should form a nice, soft, slightly springy dough. Now, normally, if you were making normal gluten buns, you would give it a little bit of a knead. At this stage, you don't really need to do that, but what I do like to do is just sprinkle a small amount of the gluten-free bread flour onto a work surface and just make sure that it's all nicely brought together to form a soft, smooth dough. You don't want it too dry, but you don't want it to be really wet. Now, once you've done that, because you don't really need to um, knead it at all, just shape it into a nice ball, and then we're going to allow this to rest for about an hour. I tend to just cover it with this is actually an old shower cap, but some cling. Keep it in a 
um, warm place and then leave it for an hour. So after an hour, we're going to roll our dough out. You'll find that it would have risen a little bit. It won't rise as much as ordinary dough, but don't worry about that. Now, what I've got here is just cling film um, that I've put on a work surface. I'm then going to dust that just a very small amount of the gluten-free bread flour. That's just going to help us roll it out better. And then we're going to place our dough in the middle. Just press it down. You'll see that it'll be slightly springy. And what we're looking to do is create a rectangle, probably around about 30 centimetres by about 20. Now to do that, we're going to, I'm just sprinkling a bit more flour on top and then I'm again going to use cling film and that will just again help us to roll it out. We do this as well if we were doing uh, pastries, um, it just makes it so much easier. Then initially, just press down your rolling pin, really just to flatten it, like so, and then we're going to roll out. Now it doesn't matter if you go backwards and forwards, but you want an even size. And when you get to a stage where some bits are wider than others, just use your hands, square it off, and then keep rolling. So this is now ready for spreading with our filling. So take off your top bit of cling. I'm just going to swivel this round because I want the long side near me because this is what we're going to be rolling. Now at this stage, if you wanted just to trim the sides, you could do that. But because I'm going to trim that afterwards, I'm not going to bother. Now the first thing we're going to do is spread with either melted or just softened butter or dairy-free spread, a little bit of butter, margarine, all over the dough. Now this will um, keep it nice and moist when it's cooking, but also help um, the dried fruit to stick um, as, we, again, we roll it. So be quite liberal. It shouldn't be hot, just softened or melted and cooled butter. And then to that, choose any dried fruit that you like. I'm using some cranberries, but raisins, mixed fruit, chopped top, apricots, um, anything like that. So you'll probably need around about 100 grams or so and just scatter those, leave um, an edge because we will be rolling it up. Some people also like to grate a little bit of fresh apple. Uh, that can be really nice. And if it was around uh, Christmas, you could use mincemeat in the middle of this instead. That would be really delicious. So make sure it's evenly spread out uh, because we'll be cutting these into our buns. We want to make sure that there is enough in each of the buns but just leave around about two centimetres um, at the edges as well. And then we're going to flavour it with a little bit of cinnamon. So just scatter that over. Obviously, if you don't like cinnamon, leave that out. Um, but that gives a lovely warming flavour. And then I've got here a little bit of efferatol, but you could use brown sugar, demerara sugar, um, you could use a little bit of coconut sugar. And we're just going to scatter that all the way across our dough. And then we're going to roll. Now this is just like you would do if you were making a Swiss roll but you do need it reasonably tight. And that's one of the benefits of the cling is that you can use that just to help you. So take your cling and then what we're going to do is we're just going to use that cling initially 
to press the first part of the dough. So the nearest towards that, nearest um, with you, and then we're going to roll it away from us using our cling film to help us. You don't want to be pressing too much at this point, you want it to naturally roll. And you can see these will be nice and dense. And then it's going to set itself on the base. And then at this point, we're going to cut it into pieces. And then these will be put in a tin and we're gonna leave it again to rest for another 30 minutes. So I'm using a serrated knife. I tend to cut it first straight down the middle. And then again, in each of those middles, I'm going to be making eight. Now, if you like them a bit thinner, that's fine. But I find that it works well with about eight. Serrated knife works quite well without tearing the dough. Remember, we're going to be leaving these again in the tin, covered for another about 30 minutes. So I'm just using a square tin. Some people like to do it in a cake tin circular. I've just greased it, so don't need to line it, just grease it. And then what you want to do is space them out so that they will end up touching each other as they bake. They don't have to, but it's quite a nice way of doing that. Now, if you haven't got quite enough space, you can always divide them, or if you've only got a small tray, you can just divide them between two smaller tins. So you're going to set them on their edges so that you can see those lovely swirls. And then at this point, just if they're a little bit squashed, just shape them so that they look a little bit more rounded. You want to do that at this stage so that you're then not interfering with them. Uh, when they start rising. Okay, so then we're just gonna cover those and leave them for another 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes, um, we're going to put those in an oven. Get the oven hot, it's going to be at 190 degrees C. And then we're going to bake them for around about 20 minutes. Now what you might find is that after about 10, 15 minutes, they start to brown. If that's the case, just cover them with a bit of foil and then cook them for another five minutes. So for about 20 minutes, 190 degrees C. Right, so after 20, 25 minutes, you'll have some lovely golden um, Chelsea buns. Um, and then all you need to do is take a little bit of just warmed apricot jam and just glaze the tops. You don't have to do this, but uh, it gives them a lovely glaze. And then um, if you haven't got uh, apricot jam, you could use just some warmed honey or maple syrup um, as well. And just warm it very slightly in the pan. And then you can either leave them as they are, or traditionally they were often glazed with a little bit of uh, icing sugar. So I'm going to just uh, drizzle over some icing sugar as well. So all I've got in here in my piping bag is just some um, ordinary icing sugar, a little bit of water. You could use lemon juice. Um, and then I'm just going to drizzle over some icing. And these you can freeze, but they're really best eaten on the day that they're made. And there we go. So there we have our gluten-free Chelsea buns.